Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Jeremiah, the first chapter, verses 4 through 8. Hear now the word of the Lord. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. And then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, you are the one who created us, who formed us, and who calls us. Please open our hearts and mind to hear your word this morning. In the precious and holy name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. This passage, which is part of Jeremiah's call story, assures us that God knows each of us intimately. God knows us even before we are born. So before we have done anything, helped anyone, or in any other way proven our worth, God loves us. How great is that? Nothing that we do or don't do will make God love us any more or any less. Now, I find that very comforting. Whether we walk the path that God would prefer for us to walk and follow our call, or we meander all over the place and go our own way, God still loves us. However, God has gifted each of us with unique abilities, and God wants us to use these abilities to be God's hands and feet on this earth, to bring some of the kingdom of God to those around us. When we live like God wants us to and follow God's call, the world will be a better place. Now, we all have a call from God on our lives, and when we answer it, we will be following God's path. Now, we don't earn God's call by how smart we are, what we do, or what resources we have. We accept the call that God places on us. God wanted, to be a, wanted Jeremiah to be a prophet even before he was born, before he showed any special abilities or aptitudes for that vocation. But God prepared him, just like God prepares each of us. God typically uses what we are good at or experiences we have to prepare us for our calling. And God can use anything. With me, I had parents who faced many health problems. So I became very familiar with hospital rooms and being with people in declining health. It gave me an appreciation for how hard it is to be sick and be hospitalized, and how sometimes it is easy to feel forgotten when you are stuck at home because of your health. So after my parents died, I started visiting friends and church members who were either sick or hospitalized. And I was following God's urging to be present with them. And those experiences, experiences and the practice of following those nudges that God gave me through the Holy Spirit prepared me to eventually welcome God's call, uh, God's larger call on my life, and is how I ended up here at Washington Street. Now, God is the ultimate caring parent. So, like with me, God generally starts us small. Um, to get us used to listening to God's voice. It's sort of like parents who have 
toddlers that are trying to learn to walk. You know how you help them walk, you hold their hands at first and you do one step at a time, and then as they get a little bit more stable, you let go of one hand and they hold on to just one finger as they learn to walk. And then finally, they are able to go by themselves. Similar, similarly, God typically starts small with us, with a little call, an urge to do something you might not normally do. And the more you respond to these little calls, the more you can identify God's voice and be ready as God calls you to go further and do more. Now, you might be thinking, whew, I think I've missed the boat. I've never heard a call from God, and I've never done anything like that. Well, I sincerely doubt that. My guess is you have all heard or felt those little nudges from God and acted on them without even realizing where they came from. However, even if you have managed to truly ignore God's call, it's not too late. You're never too old to, to respond to a call from God. And God is always calling us to do things, whether they are big or small. All we need to do is listen and respond. So you might be thinking, what does a call from God sound like? Well, I can't speak for anybody but myself, but for me, these calls come either as a voice in my head or an unlikely idea that I just can't shake. Like I said, I believe we all get these. We just have to be paying attention and recognize them for what they are. For example, you might feel a nudge to text a friend you haven't seen in a while. It's easy to ignore that nudge, but when you respond to it, when you actually send that text, I believe you're following God's call. And you may be reaching out to someone who was having a bad day and really needed to know that somebody cared about them. And in that way, you are serving as God's hands and feet. Jeremiah was reluctant to accept God's call, just like many of us are. He was reluctant because many times God calls us to step out of our comfort zones and stretch a little bit, and that can be scary. And just like Jeremiah said, he was too young and wasn't prepared, uh, many of us come up with excuses when we hear a call from God. However, God promises to be with us always and to give us the ability to fulfill our call. God will empower us to do whatever it is that God calls us to do. If your call is to be a teacher and love your students, God will give you the ability to love them even when you're having a bad day or it's hard. We can have confidence that God will give us the strength and the power and the ability to do whatever it is we're asked to do. We just need to trust God and keep at it. Now, it won't always be easy, and it won't always even feel like we're accomplishing anything. And for proof of that, you can read the entire book of Jeremiah to see how hard it was. But we do know that God will be with us as we faithfully do what God calls us to. God notices when we're trying. Now, God assured Jeremiah that he would give him both the words he needed to speak and provide Jeremiah with the opportunity to speak them. And God does the same for us today. I heard an example of this when I was listening to Dawn Staley's new podcast called NetLife recently. Her first guest was Lisa Leslie. Lisa Leslie is a four-time Olympic gold medalist for the women's, U.S. women's basketball team a WNBA champion, and most valuable player. And during the podcast, as you might imagine, they talked a lot about basketball. But then they discussed how WNBA players are speaking out about social justice issues. And Lisa Le Leslie said the following, and I quote, 
Athletes have the opportunity to use their platform and use their voice. My spiritual gift is my ability to speak, and when God tells me to move, I try to move. When I'm in spaces that make people uncomfortable, I have to realize that I'm here for a reason. I'm here to deliver a message, and that message is a message of equality and justice. If I encounter resistance, I try to remember that we're all God's children. I'm here for you to see the beauty in me so that you can see it in the next black girl or black woman. If I have a seat at the table, I'm here to change your mind about the next person that you see. I just believe that my divine space and my intervention of where I am and where God puts me is exactly where I'm supposed to be. It's the message I'm supposed to be delivering. With this quote, we can see that Lisa Leslie is living into the call that God has placed on her life. And just like her, there is something that God wants each of us to do. We just need to hear and respond. So what about you? What's your call? It might be something long-term or for a lifetime, like becoming a doctor or a nurse or a teacher or maybe even a pastor. But, and that's great. Those are lifetime commitments, generally. But God's call comes in many different ways. Sometimes a call doesn't last for your entire life. Maybe God is calling you to a career change, to come sing in the choir, to be the leader of one of our church teams or committees, to volunteer at transitions, or find some other worthy charity that needs help. All of these are ongoing commitments, but not a lifetime generally. Other times, a call from God can be short-term. It might involve following that urge you have to write a letter to or visit someone that you know is going through a tough time. Maybe you feel called to take a meal to somebody who's sick or bereaved. But with all these actions, you are following the leading of the Holy Spirit and doing what God wants you to do. Thus, we all need to be aware of these little nudges, these urges, what I call these calls, and be willing to follow where God leads, whether it's for a day or for the rest of our lives. All of us have a call. And even though everyone's call is different, they do have some similarities. God calls each of us to live like Jesus Christ. That means we love God and love others. We seek to include the excluded and work for justice and equality. We recognize that everyone is a beloved child of God and thus is a part of our family. All of these things Jesus did. And when we live like this, people will notice and our lives become our witness. Now, a lot of people think that our witness is what we say, but a much more effective witness is what we do. There's a popular quote that sums up this idea, and it says, preach the gospel at all times. Use words if necessary. And this means that we should live in a way that makes our beliefs evident. When we live grace-filled, God-centered lives, we are witnesses to the gospel no matter what we're doing. Now, as I've said, there are so many things that God can call us to do. But we need to make sure that the call is actually coming from God. God's call will always involve loving others and treating them well. It will involve doing things that foster equality 
and justice. A call from God will never run counter to those principles. A call that truly comes from God will line up with what Jesus called the greatest commandments, to love God and love others. So that's how you know if you've got a real call from God. Is it calling you to love and serve others? So this week, I hope you will take time to be quiet, to listen, and to try to hear what God might be calling you to do. And then I pray that you will be willing to answer with a yes. Think about how much better off this city, this state, and this world will be if everybody would accept calls from God and live a life of love, of loving service to both God and their fellow human beings. Now, I know no matter what your call might be, how long or short, how big or small, God will be with you in it to help you achieve it and empower you to live into it for as long as you need. And for that, we can give thanks to God. Amen.